when someone start say when it's like going. It's going. It's going. Mm-hmm. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are live tonight, Facebook and Instagram. We are the Vindies, and this is Whiskey, Whiskey Wednesday. Wednesday. Hey, y'all. Um, before we start, I just have to. Um, I, I, we want to, you know, share our. Um, Sympathy and prayers, send our prayers out, um, Vegas families, um, of the, um, horrific tragedy, um, and it's just like, it's a sad time when we have to think twice about going to even, like, a concert, or the movies, or sending our kids to school, or, uh, stepping on an airplane, and, um, you know, it just, <clears throat> there has to be a conversation about this, and, um, but uh, we, you know, we send our love and prayers to, the victims and their uh, families, but um, tonight's Whiskey Wednesday, and we want to also talk about. Um, well, we have a special guest today. Well, yes. Well, this is. <laughs> <laughs> we want to um, welcome Caroline Sauer. She's in from DC. Hey. <laughs> um, so Caroline is my dearest friend um, from all the way in high school. We, you know grown up together and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like we've known I mean, we've known each other forever we've grown up together and uh, she's in tonight and she never thought she'd be on a whiskey Wednesday nope. she was coming in to see me for coffee earlier and I was like hey want to play a game you want to you want to <laughs> you want to be on whiskey Wednesday so here she is well, you and, said whiskey so I'll yeah be. yeah absolutely I'd say she's prettier than John yes <laughs> so so we had Thanks, this John. is our first <laughs> girl guest on Whiskey oh, Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm always just the Evening. lone uh, Vindy the lone girl. girl. Evening the playing field. Evening the playing field tonight. John is sick. He's not here tonight, um, so he couldn't be here. <clears throat> uh, but hopefully he's watching and commenting. Uh, yeah, let us know if he chimes in. <laughs> Let it, yeah. Well. He'll probably, is, is he somewhere, he's probably at another concert or something, Snapchatting that or whatever. <laughs> he's out sick. He's out sick. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, <clears throat> we want to, uh, I feel like a great icebreaker is these games that we've been playing on, uh, Whiskey Wednesdays, and since Caroline is here, we have a special game just for her. Mm -hmm. uh, are you prepared? Nope. You study? Nope. Do you have any idea that she tell you what the game was? Not a clue. Not a clue? Not a clue. Okay. Okay. All right. I didn't know it was <clears throat> yes. So the game is called everybody. Ready? No, no you're, you're ginger. ginger. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so special. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we are going to show you guys uh, some pictures and she has to guess who these are of the four photos that we have here tonight. All right, okay. you think you got this? I think so. I think she's got this. Ginger's gotta stick together, so. Ginger's gotta stick got together, it. she says. Got All right, cool. All right, oh, so the really first hoping. one. It was gonna be pictures of like ginger root. <laughs> <laughs> there were types of ginger. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's what there are. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good picture. <laughs> All right. Okay. The first one, know, okay. we'll show you, and then we'll show the audience, okay. and then you can tell us right. who you think it is. Or do you want to show that first, and then I'll. Okay. All right. So, first one is. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Emma Stone. Ooh, oh, that was an easy one. Knock it Man, out. my gosh. How did you even get those? Okay. Second one. Sheeran. She's getting these pretty quick, guys. All right. I don't think she'll get this one, though. Huh? No. Why did you go print these out? You just had them on hand. I just had them on hand. I'm like, that's my, my private ginger sash. <laughs> <laughs> They're just ready to go. Ready to go. I guess we need a little pick me up. Ginger playing cards. <laughs> we trade them for t shirts. Exactly. <laughs> okay. We can tell that story, by the way. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one. Ooh. Oh, Deep this is a little trickier. Uh, hair toss. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> She's really good at this game. I have red hair. <laughs> well, that, that could have been the, uh, the, the uh, well, who did you say it was? Oh, I, first, first glance, I thought it was Sean White. <laughs> I mean, pretty close though, right? Yeah. Okay, fair. next one. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Woody the Woodpecker. <laughs> oh! All right. Yeah, we need like a horn or something. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, like, milliseconds. Okay, last one. Oh. <laughs> that was just the sort of expression. Oh. <laughs> there's nothing. That was just and a bit of a that. We have no souls. So she, she wrapped it up nicely with the, with the perfect blonde yeah. bonnet. <laughs> Show. We were playing at the House of Blues in Cleveland, which um, before we play, played there, um, yeah. we opened up for Hunter Hayes there, me and John, and then we did a, me and John did a 90s tribute there not too long ago, mm -hmm. which was really fun. But this time, uh, which I was always curious how they do it, we played in the Cambridge Room, which is right off the side of, uh, before you get to the main stage area. Um, and in that room, we had um, we opened up for uh, Melodyne uh, as well uh, as well as uh, the Teddy Boys. Mm -hmm. And the Teddy Boys were the coolest band. Oh, where's Molly? No, she's Molly is that here? She's fine. She'll, I hear she'll her. come in. She'll come she'll in here. Around. There you go. So last night we um, we played um, in the Cambridge Room, and the sound is great. I mean, we had a great mm -hmm. crowd there for a Tuesday night too. I think everyone was really into it and uh, we just want to say thank you again to the House of Blues and Melodyne for having us out and they had a really great show, it was awesome. We got I want to say thanks around. to Teddy Boy, they were a great band. Yeah. Yes. They're from Cleveland, um, so if any Cleveland friends, I don't know if Chris is out, Chris, uh, sorry, was out there yesterday, yeah. it was good to yeah. see him. Um, and and uh, you finally got him his prize from last week. Actually, his <laughs> CD, he won the yeah. CD last week, oh, my <clears throat> so I, um, I gave him to, I said give it to delivered. a friend, hand yeah. delivered. And um, so these guys from uh, Teddy Boy, right? Yeah. Um, I was talking to the bass player, and he had this shirt on. <laughs> it says Paradise Alley. And um, actually, if you don't know Paradise Alley from Youngstown, this is actually a vintage shirt because it has no area code on the telephone number. What is the number there? Uh, 793 Gary. Gary. 793 Gary. Gary. And what book is this guy? There's a guy in a chair. I, you probably can't see it, but he's, he's uh, reading a book. He's, he's having a smoke, and he's lounging and reading a book called A Likely Story. Yeah, so this... Reading um, a Likely Story. A Likely Story. So I, um, I'm like, where did you get that shirt? And he's like, I got it at a, uh, at a thrift store. I'm like, well, that's a... Um, it's a smoke shop in Youngstown. It's been there, I mean, since I grew up, you know, in um, on the west side of... Young, you've been there. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Well, there's all right. Actually, look at the back here. <laughs> okay, exactly. And um, and the guy, I, I'm like, I'll give you twenty bucks for it right now. And uh, he's like, Well, what am I gonna wear on stage? Am I gonna go and show this? Um, but actually, after we uh, we they played their set, he got a Bindi shirt, and he's like, Here you go. Here's a shirt. I'm Straight like, up trade. Straight up. Sure. So if, if he's out there watching. Appreciate it, thanks, and uh, I'm sure we'll be uh, doing some shows in the yeah. future with those guys because they yeah. were really good. They had a really good and sound. they're such a good time too. They were um, very um, cool backstage, and yeah. we just all had a good time. The guys from Melodyne were great too. We didn't yeah. get to hang with them as much, but they sounded great. They were very nice to us. And well, John caught cool. up with. Yeah. The guitarist and yeah. was geeking out on their his fishman. Yeah, yes. the uh, fishman uh, emulator the, for the acoustic yeah. and drummer so Tyler was something. very uh, gracious and shared his drums with me. It was nice. Yeah. Custom made com uh, from Bucks County. Oh. Bucks County drums. Shout out. They were great. Sounded great. Felt great. Great. Sounded all great. great. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded great yeah. all around. Great all around. <laughs> but so. what's the next show we got coming up, guys? Buzzbin. Buzzbin. Buzzbin, and we have a confirmed opener now. We have. Um... Where's Andrew at? It, it, maybe Andrew could chime in. <laughs> no, it's the um, uh, ro road ends or. I remember we played a few songs and they sounded really good. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're from Canton. Yeah, they're cool. from Canton. Um, God, now I feel stupid not writing this down, <laughs> but they're a really great opening band from Canton. <laughs> So check us out October 19th. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so I think we want to get to the ca classic can of questions, but before we do, I, Ed and I read an awesome story today, and thankfully he, um, mm -hmm. Eric yeah. Bros, yeah. said we could um, share it yeah. today. So I kind of cool. wanted to read it as he wrote it because it was a great, great story um, about the time that he um, saw Tom Petty. And I think, I mean, we're all like just kind of shocked, I mean, about the whole situation and that we were, you know, always thinking like, there's another time to see Tom Petty. He's always playing, he's always touring and that we didn't get to see him in this last tour um, is, is um, <clears throat> very um, sad for us. Um, but the story, can I share it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just preparing over there. For I'm the just last preparing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so it goes like this, and I hope I'm doing it justice. Thanks, Eric Bros, if you are watching. Uh, so he says, So, my Tom Petty once referred to me as an asshole story. Dot, dot, dot. Southern Accents Tour. He's setting the scene. Blossom Music Center, June 18th. 1985, I am 16 years old. My girlfriend, the first, uh, Michelle, for those, the first for, okay, hold on. <laughs> My girlfriend, Michelle, for those of you who don't know me, was a huge Tom Petty fan. She lived in Sandusky. I had family there. We met at a Red Cross youth leadership camp in 1983, but saw each other often. I found out when Tom Petty tickets were going on sale and played the going to my mom's for the weekend card to my dad and the staying home card to my mom. Sorry, Barbara, I was 16 and trying to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Spent Thursday and Friday nights camped out in the Sears at Eastwood Mall's parking lot because back in the day they had the ticket master. I had a job, had money, this was my plan, I was second in line. I got front row seats. I was trying to lose my virginity. I figured out, I figured front row seats to her favorite rocker would remedy the situation. We go to the show. Till Tuesday is opening. I'm a huge Till Tuesday fan. I have the album. I know every word. I worship the ground Amy Mann walked on then. Still do. Same. Uh, I'm standing up, singing along to every song, every word, telling Amy how much I love her at every break, loudly. Michelle is sitting down, arms crossed, pissed off. As they close with voices carry, Amy Mann grabs my hand, looks at Michelle and sings to me eye to eye, hush, hush, darling, she might overhear, while gesturing towards Michelle. Set ends, they leave the stage. I'm in love as, a, I'm in love as much as a 16-year-old can be with a pop star. Security comes over and says, the band wants to meet you. I grab Michelle. She lets go. She says, go. She says, I don't like them. I go. I meet the band. They thank me for being cool, for singing along, for caring, because Cleveland crowds are notoriously hostile to opening acts. As they're, sing as, as they're signing an album cover for me, Tom Petty sticks his head in the door and says, hey, guys, Cleveland crowds hate openers. We've been booed here. Don't take it personally. And sorry about that asshole up front telling you he loved you all night. <laughs> Amy looks at me. Amy looks at Tom. Tom looks at me. I look at Tom. Amy said, hey, Tom, he's right here. And pointed at me. Tom again looked at me and said in that great Florida drawl, shit, sorry, man. You were kind of over the top. Can't do it, Southern draw, sir. Uh, I, <laughs> I apologize. He said, it was cool since Cleveland crowds kind of hate openers and asked where I was at where I was in 1977. We all laughed. I told him my girlfriend was a huge fan. He left and came back with a bag of merch and then signed an album for her and said, thanks for being a fan, Michelle. After asking how to spell her name and signed a tour jacket for me, I was stoked. I said to my I said my goodbyes till, till Tuesday, walked back to my seat as they dimmed the lights after uh, stage change wearing the jacket. Michelle was like, where did you get that? I told her the story. She was pissed. While in, I enjoyed the Petty Show and I thought she t did too, there was no sex. In fact, we had a quiet ride home. She broke up with me the next day. I never showed her the album. In 1998, I sold the Dear Michelle Thanks for Being a Fan autographed album cover on eBay for $154. <laughs> wow. Tom Petty was a cool dude. That's all awesome. he says. That is a great story. I read that today um, while I was at work. 
that's yeah. such a cool story. But very well written by Mr. Bros. Yeah, absolutely. Very very cool story. Uh, check it out um, here or on his page. Um, but I think it's time for the classic can of questions. Ooh, ooh. Two, three. It's the classic. While she's drawing, shout out to Nathan Stowe, college roommate. He's watching right now. Oh, hey, nice. Friend. Cool. Hey, Nate. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry, I just moved this to yep. y'all. If you can read my writing. <laughs> this is oh. her, it's, it's terrible. Um, just show this one. Jackie's <laughs> handwriting. Um, the pen wasn't working. <laughs> Good excuse. Favorite Petty song? Favorite Tom Petty song? Yeah. Tom Petty solo or oh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker? Um, I guess I could go in general. Way. In general. general. Just general. That, most of the Heartbreakers play on solo records anyway. Yeah. Who's going first? Well, I was yeah. going through the other day um, and like trying to figure out because every song was going by and I was like, oh, I think this is my favorite. No, I think this is my favorite. All but favorites. yeah, but I have like a, a one that I recall playing over and over and over again. It's uh, Square One. Uh, off of the Highway Companion album. Yeah. Yes. Um, great song, and we were kind of going over it la the other night, um, too. I think that's my favorite. What do you guys think? Uh, for me, um, the, the one song off of Wildflower that always gets me is Crawling Back to You. Mm. Um, and, and that's just like... That's up there for me, too. And yeah. it's, it's a, whenever I hear it, I don't know, it just takes me to a, to a special place. Um, and uh, Honeybee... I mean, those oh, are five. So I mean, good. that's yeah. Um, and um, I mean, heartbreaker stuff. I mean, refugee and, and yeah. all that old stuff is just amazing. But uh, um, do you have one, Caroline? I don't know. Um, I guess Wildflower would be my favorite. I don't know, it sticks out in my mind. Yeah. I I don't even know. Um, it's hard to pick. There's too it's many. So hard to pick. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this earlier, like. For some reason, I could still probably recite every lyric to the apartment song, which is on Full Moon Fever, because I was I love that song as a child, and I could like sing every word to it. I think I still could. Um, nobody wants to hear me do that, but um, yeah, it'd be something off of Full Moon Fever, or Wildflower probably. Mm -hmm. um, you wreck me might be up there too. Oh, that yeah. was like cutting my teeth playing the drums on that one, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if anyone has Petty Radio, but oh yeah, um, a lot of people have been calling in. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it was so cool people. driving home last night from yeah. the gig, and mm -hmm. like people were calling in, and it was like Petty's uh, photographer, that photographer, was yeah. um, the Bangles. The, yeah, the girl from the Bangles because right. yeah, called um, in. I mean, they yeah. close. We yeah. heard uh, Patterson Hood mm -hmm. call in on the way to the show. And he had some really cool stuff to say, and he was talking about, you know, so Tom Petty as an inspiration for songwriting, and he was just like, free falling is a perfect song. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can't change anything with that. Like, it's a perfect song. So he's like, found a way to like, reach these high standards of songwriting, and which, you know, Patterson, Patterson Hood is a prolific songwriter, and still like, trying to reach that pinnacle. So it was really cool to hear him, you know, gushing about Tom Petty. Yeah, it's cool. It's a big loss for music. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, I was, you know, reading up, and you know, we're big fans of Stevie Nicks mm -hmm. and his producer Jimmy Levine. Jim, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, was dating Stevie like <laughs> when he was producing story. Tom yeah, Petty's album and hiding Stevie Nicks while he would come over yeah, in I, the basement so that he didn't think that. <laughs> They were dating, yeah. yeah. Tom, they'd be like, Tom Petty's coming over and hide Stevie in the basement. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. Actually, it was, it was on Howard Stern, and Howard's like, yeah. yeah, how did you get Stevie Nicks in the basement? <laughs> you know? So he's like, that is so cool. Yeah. You know, but, um, okay, next question. You want to get the other one? Oh, I think, oh, I, I, think I throw the other one in. Yeah. Okay. Tell me your petty story. Well, I guess we kind of just did that. Well... We talk about our favorite songs, but um, each of us have, you know, I'm sure 
like many others, have their moment of, you know, um, either a concert that they went to, a Petty concert, or a moment that they realized that Petty was, like, legendary um, and a songwriter and uh, a great songwriter. But for me, um, I've always been a radio listener and um, always have known growing up that Petty was already a legend. Um, and I think at my biggest moment was realizing, and I can't believe this is already almost 10 years ago, but the Super Bowl, mm. when he played the halftime yeah. show, I'll never forget, like, where I was at, you know, in the the moment that I saw, but I was always a singles person. I never, like, listened to albums so much. I grew up, like, on playlists, basically. So I'd have, like, a, a Petty, you know, here, Petty, there, like, all these different Petty songs, Heartbreakers and, and Solo, that I really enjoyed, but when I saw them play at the halftime show, I really, really realized I was like, "Oh my gosh, I know all these songs," and I didn't know that all of them were his. And um, after, shortly after that, I really delved into Petty um, and had like a little Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers mm -hmm. moment after that. And that was almost ten years now yeah. mm -hmm. uh, since then, which is unbelievable. Yeah. What do you guys? Mine was, uh, I mean, I, well, I started playing drum set when I was eight, and the Full Moon Fever record had come out right around that time. So that was one of the first things I ever played drum set to. So that's just a very personal album to me in general. I mean, I played it front to back, cover to cover. Um, and even before that, I remember playing with, like, pencils on a wooden box for some reason, mm -hmm. and a fireplace, like, divider protector thing, like a screen. I remember playing that as like my ride symbol to Traveling Wilburys because that had come out like mm -hmm. the year before. Yeah. Um, so like that is kind of a very personal record. And then the uh, the Wildflowers record, I played to that nonstop too. I did get to meet Steve Ferroni uh, when I worked at Columbus Pro Percussion. Shout out. Um, I got to be like, I, I wasn't his personal assistant or anything, but I could just got to hang out with him backstage. Super cool guy. And I did steal his drumsticks <laughs> after he was done with them. Maybe. Nice. And I still have them yeah. hiding out somewhere at home. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, so if he's listening, listening, we won't tell him. Yeah, Steve Roney. Yeah, I'm sure he, he's not missing them. That's fine. <laughs> I think we gave him a box of sticks. He's like, oh, cool, it's my own signature stick. Yeah. Great. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely stole them when he was done. We were listening <laughs> to awesome. a Lil Berry song, and Rick was mentioning, like, sometimes you can't tell the difference between Dylan's voice and Petty's yeah. voice. And I, I never even realized that, because, like, I know what yeah, you never like put them together, but listening to them side by side, they sound so similar. Bob Dylan and Tom Petty, and um, but like it's it's cool when you realize that I, I'm you know he's so distinctive um, in his voice that in his writing that like when I hear something that sounds like it, I'm like wow, that's totally Tom Petty. Like oh, that's so Tom Petty. Like yeah, he has such a distinct, even though his songs are so. I feel like there are, like, even if it's a new song, it's, like, it's an instant yeah. classic. Yeah. I still think that there is that distinct, you know, Tom Petty sound. Um, mm -hmm. Even though it's, like, delving from, like, even, like, early 60s kind of stuff. Once um, you get into him, you start really realizing his, his kind of voice and style. His, yeah, yeah distinction. Um, you had a yeah. story. Yeah, um, regretfully, I never met... Tom Petty, nor have I seen him in concert, though he's been a huge influence um, for me musically. Um, but the closest I've I've gotten to him in, in my life, um, um, I was out in LA recording at Sound City Studios. Yeah. Um, and if you're not aware, that's where Wildflower was recorded. Yep. yep. Um, Dan Torpedoes, I believe, was yeah. there as well. Um, and Fleetwood Mac and a bunch of other things. Yeah. But. Um, but I was so excited to record at that studio because I knew um, one of the great albums there was the Wildflower album. Yeah. Um, and if you have the album or the CD, actually, actually I don't even think that's on the album. Someone told me it's, it's not on the album. It's like very rarely printed, like yeah. it was once. And like, there, I heard they were talking about doing a 20th anniversary last year, and I don't know that it ever happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm it's sure difficult one to find. Yeah. yeah I will know. But. Um, but looking at it through the CD, um, there's a lot of uh, studio pictures. Yeah. 
and I took a picture, actually someone took a picture of me, and I tried to find exactly where Tom Petty was in the room, <laughs> and awesome. sort of do the same pose, and like, okay, Tom Petty was right here, you know, and, That's cool. and got a photo. I don't have the photo, I think my friend Brian. You just remember talk, taking the picture. I remember I taking the picture, I know it exists, if uh, I wish I could find it, <laughs> yeah. you know, but um, I was just looking at, at you know, the the studio pictures, yeah. I'm like, that's the picture. And he's sort of standing there by the uh, by the window window that goes in the control room. Yeah. I'm like, right there. So right there. So that's the closest. That's really cool. I, I mean, you can just kind of take that uh, Mike Campbell behind him playing guitar. I mean, he looked exactly yeah. like <laughs> Mike Campbell. Who found that picture? I did. I was like looking through like Tom Petty pictures. That's an old mud crutch. Um, yeah, like yeah. very young yeah. Mike Campbell and Rick look identical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially being that he was blurred in the background. Yeah. Bit, so. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> oh, well. Um, I don't really have anything too specific. I guess I just grew up listening to my mom's vinyls and kind of falling in love with him. And then last year I got to see Stevie Nicks play and she talked at length um, how much he influenced her career and how much she loved him and their special relationship. So. It was pretty neat and to she, hear that. And yeah. she came to the Covelli. I would have loved to see her, yeah, too. She was just here. There was yeah. a rumor at that time that Tom Petty was going to go to the Covelli. I, I oh, talked to really? a few people. Because it was the last show on her tour. Yeah. Which, I mean, you can see how they could easily start up. I mean, obviously, it never happened. But, uh, that would have been cool. But, uh, yeah. That would have been amazing. But, yeah. What time we got, guys? All right. Well, we uh, well, let's end this show with, with, with a song. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, All right. Tom Petty song? I think we shall. I got this, guys. You got, you got this? the shaker? All right. <laughs> you got the shaker? That's where you are. Just for Whiskey just Wednesday. For this. Thank you. Thanks nice. for coming out. Nice. Nice. It's nice. 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 good to see you. We'll be back for Whiskey Wednesday next Wednesday. Thank you guys. Where is it going to be next week? Or who's our guest? I think we're going to do it at Birdfish. Ooh. It is. Yeah, it's our, next week already. Guys. You, you know what else is next week on Whiskey Wednesday? Your birthday. All right. Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right, guys, have a good night. Thank you.